the scripture, I'm trying to remember if it was in Psalm we read Av, but it was about what the Lord uh, looks for in us. And, and, it, and what stuck at the last part of, of it, it said, um, to love mercy, to love mercy. I got to thinking about that. I said, Lord, you know, his word says his mercies are new every day. And I know we've heard that before, but I got to think of Lord, do I really love mercy? You know, the mercy. And I, I, I appreciate it, I believe. But this, part of that scripture says to love mercy, learn to love mercy. And that's new every day. It's new this morning. I'm just thankful we can claim it together in the face of all of our foes. And I just wanted to say that and it's just be encouraged. Amen. Uh, the enemy is never content to separate the person directly involved from their help. He wants to separate and divide others. That's his number one job, is to divide and separate God's people. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid she, that there were things that were said, uh, even in cases going beyond gossip to slander. And um, God help us. We need to pray for one another. God help us as his family to, uh, to do just what his word teaches and what we've been taught over the years. I pray God will make it so real to our hearts because this is vital. This is a vital truth and it's something we've heard so many times. But I want to read this verse again in Ephesians 4 where Paul is saying, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you, this is in chapter 4 of Ephesians, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. What a glorious calling we have received in Jesus our Lord. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Folks, that takes Christ. That Christ is the only one that can live the Christian life. It must be Christ in us that forbears and loves and, and loves mercy and reaches out to one another in love. And in verse 3 he says, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now you notice he said to keep. He didn't say to um, gain or develop. He said to keep. The unity of the Spirit, folks, has been given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is Christ in us, our hope of glory. It is in Christ one another that makes us one. We are one. Whether we can see it or not, we are intimately one in Christ. And he has given us that unity at a tremendous price. The sacrifice of himself. And he exhorts us in his word to make every effort to maintain, to keep that unity that he has given to us. And uh, so I just want to exhort us. When, some, when someone comes to us and they're being negative about someone and, and, and they're being even slanderous, folks, uh, God help us. God help me. God help us to see that for what it is. It's a devil. It's an evil spirit that wants to divide and separate us from fellowship and, uh, and from being one in the Lord. I don't, I don't know of any two people in here that are identical. I, I don't know of any two people that's personality is the same. And, and folks, we have to receive each other where we're at. Yeah, I was thinking of the song, Just As I Am. Without one plea, but simply that thou bidst me come to thee, just as I am. That's why, that's why we have to come to each other. We can't be what we're not. God knows we strive to do that. We do a lot of trying to be what we're not. God deliver us. God deliver me. We have to come just as we are. And, uh, <laughs> and, the, and the version of that song we sung, sing, Lord, I come broken to be mended. I come here now 
wounded to be healed. I come, Lord, desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I want to be filled with Him, don't you? I want to be filled with His love. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of the Lamb. And I thank God, I praise God that He welcomes me with open arms just as I am. And He loves me enough, He's not going to leave me there. He's going to take me on. He's going to draw me closer. But that's a process and that's for all of us. And when someone comes, Lord Jesus, help us to be honest and to say, brother, sister, there's something wrong here. I, I feel the spirit of division and that's not my Lord. My Lord wants us to be one. He wants you to be one with this one that you're having issues with. And encourage them to go to that one. Amen. Just like the word teaches us. One on one. Of course I know in some cases there's, there's, there's issues. I mean there's, there can be a gender gap if you will. I mean some ladies that may have trouble with some brother may not feel. And in fact it would probably be wisdom to maybe go get a deacon or an elder and their wife. Thank God for my wife. God has used her so many times to help me. Look, the, the Word of God teaches us to be subject to one another in reverential fear of our Lord. He can use a child to help us, folks, if we can humble ourselves. He can use our wives and our husbands, our brother and our sister. If somebody comes... Help us, God help us, Lord, give us discernment to see when it's a spirit of division and to be honest, to love that person enough to tell them, I can't receive that. I'm sorry, I can't receive that. Go get with this one. Go, go ask a, a, a brother and his wife in the church, not, not your relatives or your friends, but a neutral party. Go, go get uh, an elder or a deacon and their wife and ask them to come and and sit down with you guys and, and you, you talk from your hearts and let's find out what's really the case here. Because the devil loves to give us in the place of discernment a spirit of suspicion. Our personality differences, little things that we see here and there that, that cause us to be suspicious and to wonder. God help us put it under the blood. And if, and if, if we're having issues with someone and we pray and pray about it, and we can't get beyond it. God help us not to let that be within us a source of fueling such a spirit. I mean, when that spirit comes, if, a spirit, if someone comes to us and they're negative about somebody, even to slander us about somebody, but just being negative, just to sow seeds of discord, when they come, God help us to realize the enemy is attacking them, he's attacking us, he's attacking this other person that's involved, he's attacking the body of Christ. And to take our stand, and instead of agreeing, folks, God help me, God help us, when that spirit comes, not to agree with it, and fuel it, and let the spirit of gossip and slander divide and separate the body of Christ. Lord, help us to obey his word and, and in love exhort one another to do what's right. Just what the word teaches us, that we might make every effort. It says make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. I've heard things second and third handed and I, I don't know what all was said to whom, but I can tell you that Bless her heart, she didn't, she didn't even realize it. But there was, a, there was an enemy there working and sowing seeds of discord, division. And so, if anybody here has received that, um, recognize it for the poison that it is. And, and ask God for, for grace to get it out of our systems. 
And if we need to go to someone to make things right, let's be quick to do that. Folks, let's not fear to be honest with each other so we can help each other. Let's not fear uh, God's honest assessment of a situation so that he can help us and deliver us, first of all, from me. I need deliverance from me. We are so self-centered, but praise God, our God's greater. And he's paid the price. And he's promised, he has promised to mold us and make us into his image. We've got every reason this morning to rejoice and to praise God. The fact that he's the potter, I just want to be the clay, don't you? Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any need to go into the details. I don't even know all the details. I just know that the devil's been at work. We do know that. We know enough to know that. And so we wanted to bring this out as a family. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. And at the same time, if, if, the Lord, if, if, if this spirit has sown division in your heart, you know it. You know it. Make it right. Let's, let's, let's get things right. And if it takes getting, you know, a few others involved, hey, we're family. I, I, I need correction. I need guidance. I need deliverance. I'm coming just as I am this morning, not only to my precious Lord, but to you. I need the Lord in you. And let's be willing in his love and in his grace and in his mercy to receive each other right where we're at and help each other right where we're at. And we'll see this body. I, this, I believe with all my heart this is a vital part of the Lord getting his bride ready. A vital part. It's, the, it's to be one in him. He's made us one. And he wants us to be made more and more one, more and more discerning and loving and gracious to one another. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm glad we can be open and honest with one another, aren't y'all? You know, when Reed spoke what he did, um, I felt the same thing. I mean, I just felt a heaviness in my spirit. In fact, and I'm thankful for the worship service, but sometimes I wonder if we feel something, we shouldn't just go ahead and get out of the way. I'll just be honest with you. I believe, believe there'd be a greater freedom. And I had a burden coming in here. And the burden, the burden of the word of the Lord is good, isn't it? It's good when God wants to correct. Does anybody here don't need correction? I agree. Thank God when he can meet with me. And many times it is face to face. Scripture speaks we can judge ourselves as the Lord convicts us in everything. But uh, the scripture I had that, that came to me was uh, a prayer that Christ prayed. And I'm going to just mention these, these few words that he prayed. And this was right before he was going to the cross. And this was a vital prayer. Maybe the final prayer before he went to the cross. I don't know. But this is what he said. I pray that they all may be one. And he wasn't just talking about those that were there. But he said, every one, Father, that you would give me, I pray that they would all be one as you and I are one. And that's a process. And as I thought of that prayer, I thought of, um, again, where Paul had addressed, um, he had talked about, when a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, they too shall become one flesh. But then he went on to say this, this is a great mystery. He says, but I'm talking about the body of Christ. He's talking about the people of God. So in order to really get a snapshot of this, think about a marriage, you who are married. Have you ever been in opposition with one another? What do you do? Or maybe what you shouldn't do. Do you go talk to everybody else about it first? Or do you go to the husband and the wife? And, and just handle, and hopefully handle it there. And if you can't, you can get two or three more. God has given us keys on how to stay together and to love one another and with open hands and not clenched fists. I did want to read one of the scripture too. It's in, um, if I can find it, it's in Proverbs. Uh, verse eight, uh, chapter 18, verse 8. It said, The words of a gossip 
are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's inmost parts. They're like choice morsels. And I don't know, I, I, I've, I've read one version said they're like dainty food. And it's something to be desired almost by the human man. People love to hear gossip for some reason. They just do. You start hearing somebody talk about somebody. God help us to bridle our tongue. This should not be named in the body of Christ. I tried to find the scripture. I think it was in Romans or it was in Corinthians, the Corinthian church, yes. But Paul said this. He says, I'm coming to you, but it's probably not the way you want for me to. And you're probably not going to be in the place I want you to be. But he said, get rid of a bunch of things. And one of them, that he talked about slander and gossip. They should not be named. This is out in the world. Lord, help us. They should not be named in the body of Christ. I, Lord, we all need an altar in our lives. If any of us are, have done this, some, somebody can come to us and say something. Uh, let's say anybody comes to me and talks about somebody else. I should say, look, brother, this is something you should bring before the Lord. Let's pray about it. Or go to that one if somebody comes to you. When we start spreading it, is that a good thing to do? Lord, help us. Lord, help us today. I appreciate what Drew prayed. He said, when your word comes, help us just not to set it aside, but to walk in. It's vital for Christ to be in our midst. There's nothing that will cause the cloud of God to stop, his spirit to be put on hold, us to grieve the Holy Spirit, then we start getting against each other. We're the body of Christ. And, and, and I'm going to say this too. I hope I can say this right, Lord. The way God has put us together. Do y'all think we would have gotten together any other way? <laughs> so that means we've got some endeavoring to love one another. And that takes the spirit of God. You know, there, I think it's in, um, it's, it's in the New Testament, praise the Lord. But it talks about the hand not saying to the eye, I have no need of thee. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, I hope... Lord, help us that there might not be people. And one of my wife's favorite comments Brother Thomas used to make was, if somebody doesn't jump up in the bushel basket, basket the same way you do, well, that's not good. We need to receive one another. Just because someone is not in your inner circle or they might say, I don't, they're sort of weird or something, that shouldn't be named in our midst. It would be good when we sing Smile a While to go up and hug different people. People maybe you don't normally hear. Because do you think in heaven there's going to be, you're going to want to say, look, we're in heaven now, but don't come to my side of heaven. Do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> we're going to spend eternity together. If someone in here is blood bought, blood washed, let's receive them. And there's one more scripture. I know I'm jumping around, but it talks about receive those that are weak in the faith. I think in King James says, not to doubtful disputations. But I looked at other translations. It said, not based on your reasonings and opinions. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. If someone has got a need, and I'm not talking about you just trying to fix them so they'll please you, but a real need, you ought to have the, enough of the grace of God to go to them considering yourself. And God will bring healing. I believe the Lord is going to bring healing here today because I want to see the cloud move on. Here we are with this Bible school ahead of us this week, and um, I don't know what else to say, but Lord, help us to love one another. And, and I believe Christ will make us one, so amen.